This is a very quick um, recap of today's lesson on the poem Ladybug, Ladybug. We're going to be reading a poem today about a ladybug. And I know that you know a lot of things about real ladybugs, but the author in this poem is going to treat this ladybug like a person. And there is a word that we use when an author treats an insect or an animal or an object like a person, and it's called personification. So let's write that at the top of our paper. Personification. It starts out with the word person. Personification. Okay? Another thing I want you to write at the top of your paper is lyrical. You know how whenever music has lyrics, that's the words that are sung to the music. This poem is kind of music-like. A poem is lyrical when it expresses feelings and it has rhythm and rhyme. And you're going to see a lot of rhythm and rhyme in this poem. The next thing that I want to do is I want to label and put a box around the title of the poem, Ladybug, Ladybug. So I'm going to write title right up here at the top. And if I'm going too fast for you, feel free to pause and start the video again. Now, let's just look. Before we read it, poems are made up of lines of text. So right here, and you don't have to highlight this, but this right here is just one line of text. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna label it as a line. In fact, I'm gonna number the lines in my poem and I'm just gonna make small numbers right down the row. So there are 20 lines in this poem. Now, you might be thinking that the poem has something that we usually call paragraphs. And it's sort of like paragraphs. It's a group of lines that go together, but we don't call them paragraphs in a poem. Those lines that go together are called a stanza. Stanza. And in this poem, there are five stanzas. I'm going to number those as well. Five stanzas. And down at the bottom is the person who wrote the poem. Now, you know, the person who wrote a book is called an author, and the person who wrote a play is called the playwright. But the person who wrote a poem is called the poet. So let's label John Himmelman as the poet. Okay, so let's just read through the poem one time. Ladybug, ladybug, stay right here. Don't fly home. You have nothing to fear. Your children are sleeping. Your husband is shopping. Your father is sweeping. Your mother is mopping. Your grandma is strumming. Your grandpa is clapping. Your auntie is humming. Your uncle is napping. Your brother is writing. Your sister is cooking. Your niece is hiding. Your nephew is looking. Ladybug, ladybug, stay right here. Don't fly home. You have nothing to fear. So the speaker in the poem is telling the ladybug not to go away. The ladybug doesn't have anything to be afraid of. To stay there, be calm, don't be afraid. And it also named a bunch of the family members. It named family members like um, children and husband and father, mother, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, brother, sister, niece, nephew, all those different family members. And the poem tells us what illustration, this, go, this goes with a certain line, this illustration shows what group of family members. If you'll look at line five, it says your children are sleeping. So I know that this is the children, and it's from line five. When I wanna say line, I just put L. 
And then this ladybug looks like he or she is mopping. And when I look back into the poem, it says the mother is mopping. So that's in line eight. I know this is the mother, okay? Well, which ladybug is playing a guitar? It doesn't actually say the word guitar, but it says that somebody is strumming. Your grandma is strumming, because that's what you do to a guitar. So I know that this ladybug is the grandma, and that's from line nine. So the next thing that I wanna look at is rhyme. And I want to find words that rhyme in the poem. So let's look at the stanza number one. Ladybug, ladybug, stay right here. Don't fly home, you have nothing to fear. Hear and fear rhyme, okay? That's one pair of rhyming words because like a pair of socks is two socks, a pair of rhyming words is two words. So that's one pair of rhyming words. Look in stanza two. Your children are sleeping. Your husband is shopping. Your father is sweeping. Your mother is mopping. I know that sleeping and sweeping rhyme. That's a pair of rhyming words. But let me change colors. I also know that shopping and mopping rhyme. So stanza two actually has two pairs of rhyming words. All right, let's look at stanza number three. Your grandma is strumming, your grandpa is clapping, your auntie is humming, your uncle is napping. Strumming and humming rhyme and clapping and napping rhyme. So once again, there are two pairs of rhyming words. All right, stanza four. Your brother is writing, your sister is cooking, your niece is hiding, your nephew is looking. In stanza four, I know that writing and hiding, and then also, let me get a different color, cooking and looking. So once again, that one has two pairs of rhyming words, okay? The last stanza, ladybug, ladybug, stay right here. Don't fly home. You have nothing to fear. That stanza is exactly the same as the first stanza. And we already said that hear and fear rhyme. Now, when a stanza repeats like that, there is a big word that we use for that. It's when a stanza repeats, and that is repetition. You should have room at the bottom of your poem to write this word repetition. That's when it repeats. And we said one and five are an example of repetition. So very quickly, that's what we learned about the poem Ladybug, Ladybug in class today. Now I want to go over a few things about the questions you're going to be answering with the poem. Okay, so we've read the poem Ladybug, Ladybug, and we have five multiple choice questions to answer. And every time you answer a question, I want you to prove your answer by telling me what line you found it in. And I'm just going to do the first one with you. It says in the poem, what is the father ladybug doing? So I have to look back to my poem and find father ladybug. And I see that one right here. Your father is sweeping, and that's line seven. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to darken in sweeping, and I'm going to put L for line and seven. And I'll do that on every single one of these questions. Now, the part on the back. The part on the back starts out by asking you to list three pairs of rhyming words from the poem. Three pairs, okay? This is how you'll list them. You'll list one pair of rhyming words here, and you'll list another pair here, and then you'll list another pair here. Now the second part of this question 
is below. It says write one more word that rhymes with each pair. Now it's not going to be from the poem. This is something that you think up in your head. Okay. For example, if we wrote um, stay right here, you have nothing to fear. There are a lot of words that rhyme with here and fear, like clear, dear, steer, near. I can pick any one of those. Now, I do want you to spell these correctly because the words are spelled for you in the poem. And you can always ask Siri or use Seesaw to figure out how to spell something, okay? So you'll do the same thing on numbers two and three. All right, let's look at number two. This one says, find the words in the poem that name family members. Well, we saw all of those family members in the poem. And if you'll just look, it starts on line five. You've got children, then husband, and it just keeps going right on down the line all the way until nephew. And you'll just write those family members right on the line. All right, number three. On number three, they want you to use ING words to make a list of things that you might see a ladybug doing. Now, this is talking about a real ladybug, okay? A real ladybug, not personification. So, I know some things I might see a real ladybug doing, like flying and crawling. And there are a lot of other things that you might see a real ladybug doing. So you're gonna write those on the rest of the lines here. And if you need to do a little research and look up ladybugs, you can do that. Finally, we're almost to the last part. So number four says to draw a picture of a ladybug doing something from your list, doing something from your list, okay? And that means this list. So if I were gonna draw my ladybug crawling, I'm going to use this whole rectangular space. Maybe I'm going to do the ladybug crawling on a leaf. I'm going to draw a big leaf, okay? And then I'm going to draw my ladybug pretty big for a ladybug. And I know you, yours will be much better than mine because I'm doing mine quickly and you'll do yours much neater. And I'm going to draw my ladybug and I know she has six legs. And so I'll also color in with my red. And you can do better than just teacher coloring. And of course, I'll color in with my green, okay? And you'll color it all the way in. Now, I also told the boys and girls in class that it would be nice if you went ahead and put a background on your drawing. So I'm gonna use my favorite color, sky blue, and I'm gonna color in the rest of the background. And I would color it in nice and neat and not just do this teacher scribble. The last thing that you have to do, or that I'm asking you to do, and it's not written on the instructions, I want you to put a caption to go with your drawing. So in this caption, it says, the ladybug is crawling on a large green leaf period and you notice of course that I used a capital letter to start my sentence and I used a period at the end and I think that you will understand how to do this but if you have any other questions you can just let me know when you come back